It's been described as the war that changed the world. From the beaches of Normandy to the sands of the Pacific Islands, American soldiers fought and died in record numbers in World War II, sacrificing everything to defend our freedom. It was a big event, and it was a big deal in the middle of the 20th century, and it consumed uh, much of the world's resources, some 60 million uh, soldiers and civilians dead, killed uh, during that conflict. Uh, most of the world's great cities of, of Europe and, uh, and uh, Japan uh, destroyed. Uh, it was a very, very big conflict. World War II was the most pivotal event in modern history, a global conflict that truly changed the course of America and how we are viewed around the world. People just think it was a war between uh, Axis powers and the Allies. Actually, World War II was a war that uh, was a struggle for democracy versus the forces of totalitarianism. We want them to understand how much America gave, uh, some 400,000 dead. We want them to understand the scope of it. We want them to understand that uh, it could have gone the other way. We could have been speaking German or Japanese here if we had been defeated. It was a struggle for our survival and our existence and our democracy and our way of life. We want uh, young people to understand that, understand the values that uh, drove us to that victory. This epic battle is illuminated today at the National World War II Museum in New Orleans so that all future generations will understand the price of freedom. The mission of the World War II Museum is to tell the story of the war that changed the world and changed America in the process as well. How it was fought, why it was won, and what it means today so that uh, future generations can be I can understand the sacrifice uh, for freedom that was made in those years and be inspired by what they learned. Today, U.S. veterans of World War II are dying at the rate of nearly 900 per day. And with each one's passing goes another memory of a time when America was united in its national sacrifice. Here at the National World War II Museum, the traumatic experience comes alive through the personal stories of men and women on the battlefront and the home front. Stories captured by the museum's team of historians who travel the country to preserve the oral history of this war through the people who were in it. From World War II veterans like Tom Blakey, who fought in the Battle of the Bulge. The Battle of the Bulge was the most extreme conditions that I fought in. The thing that I remember most about it, and what comes in my mind first, is cold, snow, ice, and death. To civilian soldiers like Dolores Libby, a riveter on the home front, in World War II, everyone was in it together. Every woman who drove a, a streetcar or a taxi or a bus, they all did what they needed to do, their job. We had to do it. It was a job that we had to do in order to um, provide the, our soldiers with what they needed. And also we want them to understand how unified this country was. Uh, as we always say, a more perfect union. Well, there was never in our history a more perfect union of all of our population working toward one goal, uh, both at home and abroad, to support this effort. And I think that's uh, captured in the phrase, we're all in this together. And every American understood what that meant. It meant sacrifice, and everybody sacrificed, uh, and many paid the ultimate sacrifice. Originally founded as the National D-Day Museum by the renowned author and historian, the late Stephen Ambrose, along with Dr. Mueller, it was later designated by Congress as the official National Museum for World War II. We tell the big story of the Normandy invasion here uh, it's an extraordinary exhibit with interactives and oral histories, and, uh, and behind me you see the, the planes that were part of that invasion. The city of New Orleans was chosen as the site because this is where a shipbuilder named Andrew Higgins built the familiar amphibious landing craft used in every war invasion during World War II. Even President Eisenhower considered the famous Higgins boats as a key to winning the war. 
Without those boats, we could never have landed our troops on any shore. And Andy Higgins was right here from New Orleans, a boat builder, entrepreneur, uh, the epitome of the American spirit, and he built 20,000 of these uh, landing craft uh, that were used in invasions uh, in every theater of the war. So what you have here are the, the principal planes involved in the Normandy invasion and the boats that got our 150,000 soldiers ashore. So you have all the instruments of warfare that made that invasion successful. It was an extraordinary epic achievement and America needs to remember what a, what a great achievement it was. The lessons and values of World War II must never be forgotten. The service and sacrifice of men and women on the battlefront and the home front must forever be honored. Their stories must forever be preserved. That is the commitment of the National World War II Museum in New Orleans. And now, America's National World War II Museum in New Orleans is growing to tell the entire story of the war that changed the world. A $300 million expansion is underway that will quadruple the size of the museum and its interactive exhibits. It's a big war, so we need a big museum to tell the story. Three new attractions open in November 2009. Beyond All Boundaries, a 4D cinematic experience developed with executive producer Tom Hanks. The Stage Door Canteen, featuring live entertainment, and The American Sector, a Chef John Besh restaurant, and three more giant exhibition pavilions are on the horizon. The National World War II Museum in New Orleans is an unforgettable experience, honoring every service, every campaign, every hero, so that all future generations will understand the true cost of freedom. This is going to be a big event in world history for not just a century, but for a thousand years. It's going to be one of the turning points in, uh, in future generations that we'll look back on and understand what America did at that time it was very important. We sent the best of our youth halfway around the world in both directions, not to conquer, not to build empire, but to liberate people under the yoke of totalitarian fascist rulers. We left, we gave them democracies, and we came home. That's a good story. It's a story we want told forever. For more information, visit nationalww2museum.org.